To God be the glory. As human beings, whether we like it or not, we are affected by those around us. I don't know if you would agree or disagree with that statement that the behavior, the words, the character of people around us can affect us. Some may inspire us. Others may cause us to be depressed. Some may encourage us. Some may discourage us just by their presence or by their words. Some may lift us up while others may pull us down. I remember when we were taking our program at Asbury Theological Seminary in 2012, we were busy with our, together with our classmates in trying to finish our projects. Then one morning, our dean said, you are invited to attend the chapel service because normally we don't attend the chapel service of the seminary because we have our own small chapel. Don't come in go worship and don't come in to pray. But this time we were given an invitation. Uh, sabi nila, you attend because there is an international speaker who will speak for three days. We did not know the name of the speaker. So we went. There are about ten of us and we occupied two benches. And when the speaker was introduced, I was surprised because he was my friend. I was not told that he was coming to the school. Dr. Attorney Reverend June Venser. I don't know if some of you heard his name. And he spoke for one hour. And my classmates, as they were listening to him, they were so impressed. And they said, who is this guy? Where did he come from? I was just silent because I knew June for many years. And after he spoke, my classmates went forward. Kinumusta talaga nila si June? Sir, ang ganda ng uh, message ninyo. And we were impressed. And while they were shaking his hands, I was just sitting at the back. And uh, June said, Ay, Rally, nandiyan ka pala? And my classmate said, You know this guy? I said, Yes, I know him. We have been together for quite a long time. And it's one of those times that I am proud to be an alliance. Because uh, June Venser is an international speaker and he presented his material so eloquently and efficiently that people were amazed. So there are people around us that makes us proud of ourselves. But there are also people around us that would really pull us down. And their words, their actions can really make us very low in our sight. And so if we are happy, when there are people around us that can lift us up, that can make us happy, then I believe the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he appeared to them for the first time after he resurrected from the grave, were also very happy. Their souls were lifted up. As, as recorded in John chapter 20, kindly open your Bibles to John 20 verses 19 to 29. John 20, 19 to 29, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. 
And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. May God bless us upon the reading of his words. At this time, after the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, the disciples were in hiding. In fact, only John and Mary and some women were there when Jesus was crucified. All the rest ran because they were afraid. Can you imagine? You followed this man for three years. You saw the miracles that he performed. He healed the sick. He restored the sight of the blind. He cleansed the lepers. He even raised the dead. And he was captured by his enemies, tortured, crucified, and died. Kung ang kanilang amo na magaling, eh, yun ang nangyari sa kanya. Ano na kaya ang mangyayari sa kanila? So they were terrified. They locked their doors. They were inside the house and hoping that no one would find them. And in addition to that, nadagdagan pa yung problema ng mga disciples because when the body of Jesus disappeared, the Jewish authorities manufactured a story na ninakaw ng mga disciples ni Jesus ang katawan niya. Now, if you are a Jew at the time, and the soldiers who guarded the tomb were Roman soldiers, it was not a joke. You cannot steal anything from the Roman Empire. Have you heard what happened to Spartacus? A gladiator who tried to go against the Roman Empire? All of his followers, including himself, were nailed to the to the Appian Way, all the way to Rome. Hannibal, a great leader, was also defeated by the Romans. Kaya sa isip ng mga disciples, who are we to go against the Roman authorities? They are the most powerful force in the world at that time. So lalo silang nagtago. But when they were in that situation, Jesus appeared to them. And I noticed two things. When God appears to us, when God's presence is with us, two things happen to the disciples. First, they were transformed from being powerless. Wala silang nagawa when Jesus was arrested. Wala silang nagawa when he was tortured. Wala silang nagawa when he was crucified. They were powerless. They were against the greatest power of the world at that time. But God's presence transformed them to people with great power and authority. Listen to this. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For the first time in the history that the Holy Spirit was granted 
to individuals. It was only at this time that the disciples received the Holy Spirit. And because of the power of the Holy Spirit, in verse 23, he said, If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, this is not a joke. What Jesus said is a great power and authority. Can you imagine if you forgive people of their sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Only God has that authority and now He has given this to His followers. But we do not usually hear this among evangelicals. Tayo mga evangelicals, hindi natin masyado kinukot itong John 20, 23. Alam niyo ba kung bakit? May mga narinig ba kayong mga pastor na kinukot ito? Na tayo daw mga anak ng Diyos, we have the authority to say, your sins are forgiven. You know why we don't usually quote this verse? It's because of a historical precedence. In the Middle Ages, from the 1100s to the 1500s, many people in the church abused John 20, 23. Instead of using their power and authority to minister to people, to give a chance to sinners to surrender their lives to Jesus Christ and receive forgiveness, they use this for selfish interests, to make them very rich. Can you imagine if a person cannot enter into the kingdom of God without you declaring that they are forgiven of their sins? They have to pay you. Magbabayad sila sa iyo and you can charge them whatever you would charge them. No wonder at that time the church became very rich but very corrupt. This verse was abused many, many times. That's why in the 1500s, people like Martin Luther, John Calvin, Ulrich Swingley, John Haas of Bohemia, who was burned at stake, stood against the corruption and the abuses of the church. Because they say, you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you do this. I don't know if you are familiar with Jack Ma. Before the pandemic, he was considered the richest man in China because of Alibaba. Alibaba at that time was bigger than Amazon, bigger than eBay. For 18 years, Alibaba became a multi-billion dollar business. Anong trabaho ng Alibaba? Here is a producer of goods. And here is the consumer. They don't know each other. But through the internet, they can meet in Alibaba. So, ang Alibaba market. And so, this producer can sell his products to the consumer through Alibaba. And Alibaba would charge the transaction if they will charge $1 per transaction or $10 per transaction and there is 1 million transaction in one day. You will be very rich. And if I have the power and authority to declare you innocent or guilty and you have to pay me, and during the Middle Ages, people issued certificates. Oh, ikaw, meron kang kasalanan? Ito, wala ka ng kasalanan. I declare you forgiven of your sins. And thousands of people paid, not only for themselves, 
but even for their loved ones who were dead. Kasi tatanungin man, saan yung kapatid mo ngayon? Baka hindi pa siya nakarating sa langit. Pero kung magbabayad ka, madali siya makagraduate. So bayad po din tao ng mga ignorante. Because they were ignorant and they were told that the Bible said, we have the authority to forgive sins. If we do not forgive sins, then they are not forgiven. A kurug-kurug po rin tahon ang mga ignorante. Bayad po. My question is, is John 2023 wrong? No. These are the words of Jesus himself. But they were abused. Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you, I am giving you the Holy Spirit, I am giving you the authority and the power to be a judge. And if this is true, then our job is very serious. Which means that we have to be in all the world. Kaya pala sinabi ni Jesus Christ, You must go to every place in the world because of this. Dahil kung sa isang lugar, wala ka, sino ang magsabi, you are guilty and you are innocent, you are forgiven of your sins? I remember reading uh, the history of the United States, yung early days, yung bago lang sila nag-independent from Great Britain, akala natin maganda yung buhay sa Amerika. But during that time, they had a lot of trouble because there were places in the United States na walang mayor, walang sheriff, walang judge. Ano kaya kung dito sa Pilipinas may barangay na walang barangay kapitan, Walang mga barangay kagawad, walang mga barangay tanod, magpinusilay na sila. And in America, they shoot each other right there on the streets. Who will judge them? There's no judge. No one would implement the law. In fact, there was a time that a president of the United States hired corps, corpses corp gatherers na nagkalat yung mga bangkay and he hired people who would gather these corpses. Because who would say this is right and this is wrong if there is no judge? And the federal government recruited lawyers all over the country and commissioned them to go to every town, assign them to every town, to be a judge. Not many people wanted the job because it was not easy. It was very dangerous because pag nalaman ng mga bandido, nalaman ng mga evil people na may parating na judge, ambush na. Hindi pa siya makarating doon sa town, patay na siya because evil people do not want a judge to be in their midst. It was very risky, but it has to be done. The federal government had to pay them. Ikaw judge ka doon, ikaw judge ka dito, ikaw judge ka doon, so that criminals will be condemned, but innocent people will be protected. Now, I want you to imagine that is our job. God is telling us to go anywhere in the world so that someone can say, you are guilty, you are innocent by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope we take this very seriously. Yes, it was abused. Corruption came into the church because of this verse. But this verse is very important so that when a person wants to surrender to Christ, he has a place to do it. 
That wa- that's why we have to put a church in every barangay, in every municipality, so that those who would want to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, they can go there and someone can tell them, because of your faith in Jesus Christ, you are now forgiven of your sins. From powerlessness to great power and authority, but that power and authority should not be abused. The second thing that I noticed that transformed the believers was that they were transformed from obscurity. Akala nila yung buhay na wala, wala nang halaga. Andun na lang sila sa sulok. But when Jesus appeared to them and showed them that He rose from the grave, they stood from that situation and became bold in going to all the places. You look at Thomas, a very reluctant disciple. Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. But when Jesus said, Andito ako, you put your finger in, in my hands, you put your hand on my side, I am here. And Thomas responded, and only among the apostles I hear this statement when he said, My Lord and my God. And from there, Thomas stood and preached the gospel. I was looking at the map I googled this morning, look at the map of the Middle East, and I look at the places where the disciples died. Because only James died in Jerusalem. All the rest died outside of Jerusalem. Some of them went to Cappadocia, to Persia, to North Africa. Paul arrived in Rome. But where did Thomas go? Thomas went the farthest. He went to India and preached the gospel and he died in 74 AD. And the church that was planted in southern India is still very much alive until today. The Assyrian church would trace their spiritual ancestry to Apostle Thomas. The church in Sri Lanka would trace their spiritual ancestry to Apostle Thomas. The presence of the Lord Jesus Christ transformed them from obscurity to a life that has no purpose to a life that is shining and bold in preaching the gospel. When God called the disciples, they did not know that one day all of them will be martyred. All of them will die. But they were willing to follow God's leading because the responsibility is so great. Whoever you forgive, their sins will be forgiven. Those you do not forgive, the sins will not be forgiven. It's a tremendous responsibility. We don't know where God will lead us, but we must be willing to go because there are those who are waiting to hear the words, your sins are forgiven by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was uh, joking with my friends, and I said, when I was in college, I enrolled in a course that promised money. Kayo, na mga nag-aaral sa college. Di ba nag-aaral kayo? Dahil pagkatapos, magkakapera talaga kayo. But then, halfway or in the middle of my journey, God led me to another course that did not promise money. So I was a little disturbed. I was struggling. But in the end, who can resist God's call? And so I gave in and finished the course. And the first 16 years of my life, I was ministering in the mountains 
where money was as rare as the unicorn. Kana bang tagsa lang mo magkita? And yet, the joy that I experienced through those years was like no other. When you see people kneeling down before the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, asking for forgiveness, asking that they would be saved, when people bow before God and be set free from all kinds of slavery, all kinds of bondage, the joy that you experience cannot be compared to anything in this world. The disciples were powerless, but the presence of Jesus Christ granted them tremendous power and authority. The disciples lived in obscurity. They thought their lives were nothing, but the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ transformed them to be bold ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ. People need to hear the words, your sins are forgiven by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't hear the words of Jesus physically. Jesus is already in heaven, but they can hear those words from us. Jesus said, if you forgive sins, they are forgiven. If you do not, then those sins are not forgiven. What a tremendous privilege at the same time, a great responsibility. Several years ago, there was a lady, she was already married at that time, very rich, highly educated, but very unhappy. She was burdened and she said, Pastor, although I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, I have this burden in my heart for many, many years now. And I said, why? She said, when I was in college, I got pregnant. And I did not want to tell my parents, my loved ones, and the community. I do not want to put them to shame, so I aborted the child. And since then, it was haunting me. There are times I could not sleep. And I read John 20, 23 to her, and I said, By the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You should forgive yourself. There are many people in the world today, they cannot forgive themselves. They think of themselves as filthy sinners. They want to hear the words, Jesus Christ died on the cross, and by his authority, your sins are forgiven. She knelt down. She was crying. Her tears were falling down her cheeks, and he said, Pastor, for the first time in many years, the burden was lifted from my chest. People would want to hear those words. By the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are forgiven of your sins. To God be the glory.